So in this video, we're going to look at modifying forms and creating your own forms. So with creating your own forms, the first step is click on the drop down for the type of form you want to create. So for general forms or text report forms, usually pedigree forms is what we want to create so click on pedigrees create a pedigree form give it a name my second form now you'll notice it's already uh, in the pedigree group we'll select a paper size so for the US It would be letter, and uh, most other places it's uh, A4, so we'll click OK. And there's our form. Now you can notice that I can zoom in and out by holding the control key down and using the mouse wheel or hitting the plus or minus to change the, the zoom. Going back to the database, we select a subject and then select the form. And of course it's blank. We haven't done anything yet. So to begin editing, click on the edit form button. And here is our blank form. We've got some dots here, which is a, a grid that we could use for lining things up. The first thing we do in form design is to create a record. So I'm going to click on the record button up here on the toolbar. Now imagine the area that the record is going to take. That'll be a, a rectangular area. Click on the top left, drag it and release it. You'll notice it's green. So records are in green. They can be moved around just by clicking on them and dragging them around. You can resize them by clicking in a handle and dragging then release. The one parameter you want to set on a record is the table that it belongs to. In this case that's going to be pedigree. Now the next step is to put a field in your record. So we click on field again click drag and release so what this does is display the contents of a field in the database so we want an appropriate size for that any text outside that area will be cut off and you'll note fields are blue rectangles the most important parameter with a field is the field it links to so in this case we'll use name And probably the second most important parameter is the text size and the font. And at this stage, we actually have the simplest viable form. So if I click on back to form, and we can see it's actually displaying the subject. There we go. So I can double click on this to change the subject and you'll see that that has changed as well. Okay, pretty simple so far. Normally we uh, don't often use straight fields. We will often use what's called an expression. So the first step is to create an expression and to do that, click on Edit Expressions, and these are our list of expressions, of which there are none, so we'll add an expression. First thing is give it a name, so we're going to use this for the subject, so I'm going to call it that. You have to tell it the table that the expression belongs to, and then give it an expression. Now you can type the expression, but it's usually easy to click the drop-down button and you've got a little expression editor here. So 
what we want to do is have the pre-title, the name, and the post-title. So I'll select from the insert field list, and here we have pre-title. Now notice it is in square brackets. Without the square brackets, it's just text, normal text. So we'll add a space, put in the, the name, and add a post-title. Click on that one and we'll click OK. Now we need to change the field to use that expression. And again, we click on the field drop down and now I have to click back on the field and it should appear there. So right at the bottom, starting with an equals is the all the expressions and we only have one so that's subject so now when i click on it we can see the field is subject and when i go back to the form we can see that it's actually inserted the title and if it had a post title that would be there as well so so far pretty easy stuff the next step is to make it a bit more interesting. We'll add a sire and a dam. Now, one way we can do that is to copy the record and the field that we've already done. Now, notice that you can select items just by clicking and dragging, and all the objects that are wholly contained within that area are selected. So if I just click here and drag it to here, nothing selected. To here, the field is selected, then the record. Or I can click one item, hold down the shift key and click another one. And I can keep clicking on additional items just to add more items to the selection. So having selected these two items, I'll click on Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste. Now the original items I had selected are no longer selected, but the copy is selected. So I can just click on that and drag it down to here. Now I might resize that. Let's bring that down to here, down to here, down to here. Okay, so now we have two records and two fields, but they're not linked. Now, just out of interest, I will show you what happens when we go back. Nothing. It's actually broken. So when we go back here, we can see they've now been colorized. This is to indicate there was an error. So a record that has no links going into it, and I'll explain what links are in a minute, is a root record, and you can only have one. I'll show you something else at this stage. We have a show list and that actually lists all the drawing items on the page. If I just resize this a little bit here, we can see, okay. So what it's saying is that this record and this record, and I can actually select them. If I click here, you'll notice that the, the handles appear and I'll click this one. It's complaining that we've got two root records. So you may have noticed that I can select items from this drawing list or just by clicking on it. So if I click it here, it'll appear ticked here. Okay, so I've kind of demonstrated what can go wrong. Now the way we fix it is to link the, the root record to the sire record and the way we do that is with a link so we click on link here start from the source record click and drag and there we have a link and if you look closely you'll notice that it's red and it's got a blob on the source end and nothing on the destination end the only parameter that you can set on a link is the field. So we want the subject record to link to a sire record. So we have to set the field to sire. 
to make things a bit more interesting, we'll copy that and paste it. And I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard here just to kind of drag it down. And I'll manually move it across. And of course, I'll have to add another link. So I'll click on the link button, click and drag. And in this case, the field will be dam. So let's go back to form to see what we've got. And there is our subject and here is the sire and the dam. So just a couple of uh, other things that we're likely to do. Having done one generation, we would likely want to create a second generation. So I'll do that again by selecting that. I'll do an edit copy and an edit paste. And just drag that over here. Typically, the first generation is going to be bigger. You know, really, I should have uh, copied, uh, copied it and sized it once. But anyway, we'll do that. And for the... Oh, let me just... Align that up. I'll select that and just use the arrow keys to line it up. Almost. So with the first generation, we probably want to show some other information in here. So we'll take a look at the expressions again. We'll add another expression and um, I'll call it gen. Ooh. Generation 1, again, it is in the pedigree table. And I might just cheat a little bit. I'll copy that and paste that in there. And then click back. And we'll get the designer. So apart from inserting fields, you can just type text and that will appear there. But that's... Not going to be very useful. You can also insert special characters. So a new line will force a line break and uh, you'll notice that that's an exclamation mark. You can of course just type an exclamation mark. That would be a whole bunch of empty lines. So on our second line we might want to see the registration number and uh, we'll have another one and put in the color and then I'll click OK. So for these two fields I'm going to hold down shift and select the other field. We'll notice that they're still set to subject and uh, so now we'll change it to generation 1. OK so with our second generation it's going to be roughly half the size of the first generation. I'll just copy, copy that and paste and just drag that down there. So now we need to link the sire to its sire and dam. And actually I should be able to just take that one and uh, I'll duplicate it and I'll put that one in there, put that one in there and I'll select the dam link and duplicate that one. That one goes down to there, that one goes down to there. Sorry, that goes there. So let's take a look at what we've got. And we have a two generation pedigree. So we can continue in this fashion. It gets a little bit easier when you do these other generations. So I can just select this and do a copy and then I'll do a paste. You might have noticed that I could have uh, just used duplicate instead of edit and copy. OK, 
Okay. All right, some of the alignment is maybe a little bit out, but um, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is just select the records and just to make it look a little bit nicer I will set the line width to 1 and uh, we'll take a look at what that looks like. Okay, back here. So now with our header we probably want to put in some static text and that is done by just clicking text. So I'll just click there and there and type in the text pedigree of click there and there we have it. I'll just increase the text size a little bit and we probably want that one to be bigger as well. Maybe select both of these and change the style to bold italic. We probably want the to make it all line up you have to have the top of the selection lining up so that's a fairly good way to do it. We've got plenty of space up here. So back to form to see what we have and then we have something that looks like a reasonable title. Now usually in the subject block here we're going to want to put a few things. I might just drag all that down here. Now you'll notice that we've actually broken our links so we've got to drag that back here, click that one, drag it over here. So it gives us a bit more space for the signature block. And we're probably going to want to have some information about the subject, so we'll again just add some more text and uh, we'll say registration. Now you notice how that's been cut off. The text is a little bit big for that. And we'll cut that one back and we probably don't want that so we'll make it just regular font. So I'll just put that one over there. So now we have a label and we just need to add another field. So click on field and put that one there. So again we can get the, uh, the two texts to line up just with the handles on the top. So for this field we will of course select registration. And if we go back to our form, uh, there we have the registration. To put in photos is just as easy. I can uh, Duplicate that, drag that over here, and uh, you'll see there's actually nothing special about photos. You just it's just another field, but where you select a photo. Now I don't believe there's any photos handy to demonstrate that, but um, anyway, the, those are the basics. And um, before we leave, the most important thing is to save your form design. So click on that or use File, Save Form File. Now what we'll also do pretty quickly is take a look at copying stuff from another form. So what we might do is just create another pedigree form. I'll call it my third form. And I'll use a US letter size for that one. 
So to start, I'll go to a form that I like. So let's say I like the fancy pedigree. You notice all these colors here, that's because I've selected show repeated ancestors as colored. I can also so show no marks or show champions in red. So if the pre-title contains CH, then it's considered to be a champion. So those are all highlighted. So there's a number of options there. Okay, so we'll go into the edit form. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing and I will click on here and hit copy then I'm going to go back to my third form I'll edit that form and do a paste so this is a little bit big because the original one was an A4 and this is US letter anyway it's a start now if if I then go back to form uh, unfortunately a lot of it is blank and the reason for this is that when you are copying those items you're not actually copying the expressions that they used so let's go back here and again, you can see anything that's got an error is highlighted in orange. And if I want to see what those errors are, and there are numerous errors I can see here, I hit show list. And there's all of our errors. So it's subjecting to this field is referring to great grandparents. And the error message there is field refers to non-existent expression and it even tells you the name of the expression although that's pretty obvious from that um, quite a few errors here and uh, again we can see which one it's actually referring to if I click on that you'll see it's highlighted but if I fix it up for this field then it'll fix it up for all the grandparents so well, let's just start with a simple one here and that is let's just have a look down here so that's pedigree of okay so to fix that I would go to edit expressions and create an expression and just call it the same name we of course have to set the table again as pedigree and it's getting a little bit tedious uh, pre-title put in a space name and post title click OK um, let's just put that away for the moment and go back to our form and so one of the problems here is so you can see this is no longer orange but basically all these ones that are highlighted in orange need to be fixed before the uh, form will display so that's something to watch out for and um, but anyway the basics uh, the basics are there that you can copy elements between forms and uh, all the forms that you see here we created ourselves using pedigree publisher so there's really nothing you can't do and that completes this brief tutorial on designing and modifying forms